What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dwan Lightfoot. I'm here with the one and only, the Cisco Tutor guy, CCMP, Terrence Warren. What's good, family? What's good, man? Glad to be here. Been trying to get here for a minute. <laughs> hey, man, been trying to get you here, bro. Just trying to get them schedules aligned. It took some time, but we here now. You feel me? Yep, yep. I remember when you first started your page, man. Man, hey, yeah, that was a few years ago, bro. Yeah, yeah. A few years ago. Um, yo, so you're a CCMP network engineer. You want to tell – and a veteran. Thank you for your service, by the way. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Likewise. Yes, sir. So let's start out by introducing yourself to the YouTube community, telling them about who Terrence Warren is and what he does. All right. Uh I started by way of the military. You know, I was introduced to fiber optics, uh, telecommunications, and IT that way. And, uh, you know, while I was in, you know, I learned some Cisco. But in the military, they have so they had so many different vendors. They had Nortel. They had the Lucent stuff. And they had Cisco. So they had a variety of vendors. But it wasn't until after I got out of the military, after doing 10 years, that I had focused on Cisco specifically, because a lot of companies, you know, were using Cisco, you know, at that time, they were like the dominant networking company. So it was just better to learn those devices and those systems, those networks. So uh, I took some time to learn uh, a lot of Cisco. I took the time and money because I was paying out of pocket. Every time I had to take a, a, a exam, it was out of pocket. Mm. So mm. eventually, you know, after my post 9-11 kicked in, they said, hey, uh, if you go to school, we'll pay for it. So that's where I started going to school to uh, get a degree in cybersecurity. But by the time I was in school, I had already had two CCNAs. I had my CCNA routing and switching and my CCNA security. So uh, with that, I added that CCNA, uh, cybersecurity degree. And um, just like you, um, I wanted to pursue a CCNP because once you get the CCNA, I just felt like, I needed more, you know, because right. by the time you get the CCNA, you've already labbed so much and done so much. It's like, man, let me just keep going. And so I went ahead and got that CCNP. And um, rather than pursue a CCIE, I was going to just do like maybe two or three CCNPs. So I was in school. Uh, I was taking a CCNA course in school. So by the time I got my CCNP, I told my instructor, showed them, and he was like, well, you're exempt from all the exams. I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, I mean, you're in a, you have a CCNP in a CCNA course. What am I going to teach you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's when he started kind of, uh, I'm, I'm going to be funny and say pimping me out because he would say, class, if you need to know anything, you have any questions, get with Terrence. He's a Cisco guy for the class. He, uh, he can tutor you. So what was happening was he was referring so many people to me. They were asking me so many questions. I started doing little videos in the class to explain the protocols because it was maybe me and maybe two or three other people that actually worked in the field of IT. Every other person in the class, they were like 18, 19 years old. They didn't have any experience and they had so many questions. They were just new. Right. So I started doing these little videos to kind of explain to them what protocols were and giving them um, examples in layman's terms, you know, how uh, UDP and uh, TCP works and how, uh, you know, best effort versus uh, the UDP <clears throat> and explaining OSPF and uh, EIGRP and the differences in hop, between hop count and uh, bandwidth and things like that. Right. So when I started doing these videos and I started getting all these comments and these views, I just kept going. And uh, before you know it, I got like, a hundred something videos up there. Uh, I even started doing the, uh, uh, when I was doing the CCMP, I started doing packet tracer uh, videos of the exams that I was doing for the CCMP to help people who were thinking about pursuing that. So I did lab walkthroughs. Um, and, and that's how I started getting known as a Cisco tutor guy. Cause that's actually what the, the teacher called me, the Cisco <laughs> tutor guy. So I, I just kind of took that term and started putting it on everything. So now I've had all these videos on YouTube, um, that were explaining protocols and networks and things. 
And so uh, the teacher said, you know, uh, you're a big help to me. You're, you're my prize student. Right. And I asked because when we did labs, you know, for a, a class, uh, a college course with a route and switching course with no labs was kind of, you know, foreign to me. Right. So the way he would do labs was he would go online and download little handouts and then bring them back to the class. And, and that's kind of cheesy, you know, for yeah. a college, a college university. That's, that's how you don't have any books. You yeah. know, I, I had my own lab books that I would go on Amazon and buy and things like that. So right. I asked the instructor, I said, you know, um, I could write a lab book for this class, you know? And he goes, oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, I could, I could write a lab book for this class, but if I did, could you get behind it and get the school to adopt it into their routing and switching program? And he said, yeah, if you do that, I'll promote it. I'll do this and I'll do that. And yeah, just, just make it happen. So <laughs> three years later, I finally had it finished. And that's the lab book that I have on the market now. It's called uh, the Cisco Tutor Guide Routing and Switching Beginner to Intermediate Labs. So that yeah. lab, yeah, that lab book right there. Yeah, I, I, hey. You sent me a copy of it, man. It's a pretty yeah. big, it's a pretty thick and detailed lab book, man. Right. Um, you, gave, you gave me a shout out in it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, I've been following your page since the beginning. Yes, sir. Like, right, right around when you got your CCMP, I think I got mine like a year later. Okay. I'm a, I'm actually gonna share a link to your lab book, your YouTube, and LinkedIn, all your information in the description so people can connect with you. Because right. there's a lot of people out there that's rushing to get that CCNA before it changes. Oh, oh, definitely. <laughs> and they should. They should. Because once it changes, once, what is it, February 2020? Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be much harder because of everything that they're putting into it now. Since Because, you know, they're doing away with the others, the other CCNA, like a bunch of them. Wireless is, is going away, the CCNA yeah. wireless. Yeah, and that wireless. was the one that I was working on right now. Man, it, it's I, I got mixed feelings. I read a lot about the new CCNA. It may it may be easier. And the reason why I say that, they're removing a lot of the routing and the things that people struggle with, and they're making it more of a general certification. It's more of a foundational cert. And so you get this certification, and then you move on to... Let's say you want to get your CCMP and enterprise or security or data center or something like that. So I, it may be easier. I'm interested to see how it plays out and how the industry looks at the new certification. I actually uh, did some, after I saw your video about it, I went on the Cisco website and started doing some research myself. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that it may be harder for people who don't have a CCNA but people that who already have a CCNA or CCMP, um, it may even may even be uh, helpful. Like, uh, like I said, I was pursuing a CCNA wireless, but I was also considering a CCMP security because I already have a CCNA security. Right. And I seen that instead of taking four exams to get my CCMP uh, security, it's only two now. Uh -huh. to make the change. You take a core exam, and then you take one other exam out of like five that you get to choose. You get to choose the, the second exam that you take. You don't You don't actually have to, you won't have to take the core exam because you already have a CCMP. And since you got a CCMP, they're going to give you that enterprise certification and that core um, certification. So you'll immediately, from my understanding, be eligible to take that CC, CCMP security. Yeah. And you can take the CCIE lab. And that's what I'm saying. So for people that already have it, it benefits. Yeah, true story, true story. Yeah. So that that's good right there. That's like four exams that I don't have to take, like as if it had to stay the same. I'm right. even gonna wait until they change it before I even do it. <laughs> but I am disappointed that they take they took away the CCNA wireless because you know Cisco do hold a lot of wireless devices out there, especially since they've been buying up what they bought Aruba and, and some of those other wireless competitors. Yeah. So that, uh, to not have a, a wireless certification anymore, kind of bust. Yeah. It's going to drive people to the CWN, CWNA certification. I was just about to say that. And, you know, I, I, a lot of people have never even heard of that, you know? Yeah. It's such what, a, a uh, not as known as Cisco. People that like, um, uh, people that work for wireless companies like Meraki for one, 
and many other wireless companies that actually um, their, their business is wireless, they actually push the CWNA because it's more of a general standards certification when it comes to wireless. Right, right. Um, I was fortunate to work for a company that uh, their their IT department was so small that you know I was a senior I was a senior engineer there and I was able to learn everything. I, I they had me doing wireless. I was doing security. I was doing routing and switching. I was doing voice. Right. And I was doing troubleshooting. You know, and configurations. I would configure devices to be shipped out to other locations. So I did that position for four years, man. And uh, when I uh, left that company, I was so much more marketable, so much more valuable than they would have believed. Because while I was there, I think I was in my fourth year, I was getting these offers for like crazy numbers, right. crazy numbers, man. And I'm <laughs> like, how come this company won't give me a raise? I'm getting offers that's, that are, that's up here yeah. and they're still paying me here. And so I would tell them and they never want to match it. I'm like, yeah, I just got an offer for like 75 and all y'all are paying me is 45, you know? Yeah. That's what I, that, that was what I got offered when I started. And here, four years later, I'm still making the same thing. What's what's going on? And I'm getting these these big offers because and they will have like wireless positions, they have voice positions. And I'm like, man, I could go in any direction because yeah. they train me on everything, which was a good thing and a bad thing. If you're not, if you're going to train me to be super powerful, you know, like Superman, why won't you fight to keep me, you know? Hey, man, that's the thing. That's the thing, though. Know, um, what I had this position in the same type of scenario. I got to do everything. And because of that position that I'm super thankful that I had as a network technician, it allowed me to get my CCNA and my CCNP just because of how in depth and how many different technologies I got to touch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they wouldn't pay me, but the knowledge to me was way more valuable and it still benefits me today. You know right. what I mean? Same, yeah, same thing. I, man, they had me, I, all my CCNAs, I was with this company, both CCNA, I got the CCNA. Then three months later, I got CCNA security with same, I was at the same company. Year later, got CCNP. Year later, got my degree. And huh. every time I accomplished something, they were like, oh, good. That's great. You got your, your CCNA. That's good. Oh, you got your CCNP. Oh, you got your CCNA security. Oh, yeah. And, and they would never give me a raise. They give me more responsibility. Oh, right. well, well, now you can you can go here and travel here and do this and do that. Uh, yeah, you're learning a lot. But they did not give me a raise. And so in my supervisor, he was a good dude. He was really fighting for me to get a raise. And he would be like, look, we need to do something for, for Terrence because he has a CCNP now or he has his degree now and he's going to be able to go anywhere and get what he wants if we don't do something now. And so the, right. the CIO and the board members were like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do something for him. we got to keep him. But they never would. They just talk about it and nothing ever happened. Yeah. So so one day my supervisor was like, look, you're getting. I know you're getting a lot of offers. I think that just if you get an offer that's going to pay you 75, 80 or higher than that, take it because I don't know when yeah. these people are going to do something for you and you shouldn't have to wait around because you know, you're, you're getting real good at this and they should know that if they want to keep you, they need to pay. Right. And that's what happened. He said, yeah, one day you're going to look up and he's just going to be gone. And, and that's just what happened, man. I got a real good offer. Um, uh, did the, the little test and interview and it went well. That's what's up, man. Good stuff. Congrats, bro. But I still maintain a relationship with, with that supervisor. Uh, yeah. I want to touch on a, a, one, another thing one of your videos talked about because uh, it, it, it hit close to me. I, I can relate to it. Okay. You had a video call uh, was something about minorities in IT. Oh, yeah, being black in IT. Yes, being sir. Being black in IT, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I, have, I had some experiences that I could tell you about. I'll, I could just, I'll go through one. Okay. But, uh, I know what you mean where um, you go into, I remember doing an interview over the phone. I did like two or three interviews over the phone. Right. And they loved me. They were, oh, we're just so excited to get you in. And, you know, they couldn't get me in fast enough. Right. Right. Um, and, and they had me do this little test, like where they had me log into a network and I had to troubleshoot some issues on the network, like a test. 
I didn't know it was a test. I just thought that while we were talking, something went down, and, and they kind of played them like, yeah, uh, it's not working. Uh, can you see what you could do? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And I, I went in, logged in, and they gave me some some credentials to go in. On, it was a voice network. Right. You know, they would have some issues with some uh, people's phones and extensions. And I just went in because this was something that I was doing every day. So I looked at it and saw exactly what was wrong. Oh, the, 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 the MAC address doesn't match. Or, well, you know, just I fixed their three issues. And he goes, wow, that was good. I said, yeah, all I had to do was match the MAC address. He goes, okay, well, that's all I have for you. I said, was this a test? He goes, yeah, it was a test. I'm huh. like, cool, you know, I, I didn't know, but that's cool. And, you know, they were happy. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to get you on and get you a start date. We want to fly you. We're going to bring you down here, take you to lunch, you know, meet you in person. So I get there and I walk into the building. Immediately, I notice I am the only <clears throat> African-American in yeah. the whole building. Two floors. Yeah. I'm the only one. Because it had this type of button where you could look up and see the second floor because the walls were like glass or something. And I'm looking all around as I'm walking through, as they're taking me through. And I'm I'm like, man, are there any other black people in this company? Right. And so once I realized that there wasn't, I mean, there were other minorities, just not black. If yeah. You know what I mean? yeah, of course. Okay. So I'm looking around and, and I'm, I'm getting this nervous feeling. I'm like, man, I already see how this is going to go. Because I had already been through it, right? So yeah. it's, it's either, either they're going to hire me because they need one yeah. or they're not going to hire me because I'm the only one. Yeah. So they, they take me out to lunch. They talk to me and everything. And then after that, I never heard back from them. Hmm. But before they met me, they were trying to get me a start date. They were um, they would call in like two or three days. They they call me with with another interview or more questions. They would just stayed in contact with me for like two weeks. They called every other day. Then after we met, I they didn't call me anymore. So two or three weeks later, I called them. I called their HR to find out well, what's the status. I haven't heard anything back. What's going on? And they said, Oh, well, we decided to go in a different direction. I said, Okay. A couple weeks later, the same position is listed again. Man, you know, it's a bunch of ways to look at that. Um, the way I look at those situations that, you know, those positions just wasn't for me. You know yeah. what I mean? I always want God to put me in a situation to where I'm going to learn and I can I can win. If I don't win, I learn. You know what I mean? So it, it's a bunch of ways to look at it. Because if you think about it, what if Jackie Robinson – would have never went to baseball because it was nobody that looked like him. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, if if I happen to be in an environment and I'm the only one, that means I'm opening the door for somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to go in there and, and represent and be the best that I can be, build relationships the best that I can, and just set a standard to be like, oh, man, this guy ain't so bad. It don't really matter what he looks like. He's smart. He can do the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the way I look, I, I also kind of considered maybe they were intimidated because um, I had an active CCMP. I had all my stuff and a couple of the guys on it, only a few, maybe two or three on that team had a CCMP right. and two of them were expired. But they mm -hmm. still say, yeah, I have a CCMP. You know, they feel yeah. like because they had it, period, that it's, it's, it's still good because they know the uh, what the information, the knowledge. So yeah, I looked at it like that. Man, but look, you, you just wrote a book. You got your <laughs> you got your YouTube popping, you got a dope job. And to in my opinion, you know, God bless you regardless of what that situation was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I looked at it like that too. You know, that's the, that's actually what I was going for. I'm trying, trying to be like you. I'm trying to uh, <laughs> motivate people and trying to encourage encourage people to come into this field. Because I, I spent my time in the hood, you know, back when I was, you know, struggling and everything. And I, when I finally got on, I was able to move to, like, the, the nice neighborhoods, the gated communities, the, the nice cars, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm living my best life right now. But yeah. I felt like I had to go through that period so that I would know what it's like when I got it so I could appreciate it. Hey, man, the, the struggle is real, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the struggle is real. 
um, when I first started YouTube, you know, my wife, she she ain't worked in like forever. So it was just me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm on my fourth kid, you know, and it was tough, man. And then I grew up struggling, you know. So all I really know was struggling. Right. And I one of the things about my channel when I communicate with people and the reason why I do it is because I see so many people that's in the same situation mm -hmm. that I've been in. And it's like, look, there's other ways out here to get it. There's If you just apply yourself for six months and learn some of this information technology, <laughs> you're going to be all right. Yeah, and, yeah, and then you just keep building on that knowledge. Like you could put yeah. yourself in a really good position. This is a way out. Yeah, that's what I was saying. This, yeah. is, this is like the key, the golden ticket. You know, all you, people, like, people be like, "Well, you got to be smart, or do you have to have college?" I said, "No, you know, not there's there's plenty of dumb people in IT." <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. "You just got to have the willingness to want to learn because it's like doing homework all the time." You yeah. never stop learning. And the way technology changes, you have to be relevant. You have to change with it. That's one of the reasons why I like certifications over degrees. You you have to keep uh up uh, what renewing them every three years, which yeah. keeps you relevant to what's what's going on, what's coming out. For sure. Yeah. I I wanna ask you something. I get this question a lot and I've been wanting to make a video on it, but bro. In, in, in your opinion, what is a network engineer to someone that has no idea um, about information technology? How would you explain what a network engineer is? Um, see, I was about to say something like someone who engineers the network. <laughs> I know what you mean because I've asked that question too. I used to ask, what's the difference between a network engineer and a network analyst and all this? But yeah. uh, I think it's someone who can manipulate the network using the protocols, using uh, what what else? Uh, protocols, devices, just uh, routers. So the way I look, someone who can manipulate and control the network. You know, the, yeah. the information that flows, taking the information that we get and using it to apply uh, how we receive things. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I get that question a lot. And I know in my career, man, I've done everything from network monitoring <laughs> to troubleshooting and installing um, LAN cables to yeah. only troubleshooting layer one and layer two to firewalls to it's so many different aspects that that job title can have. It's, yeah, it's you're crazy. right. It's like I, it's, it's, it's kind of a hard question to answer because I've asked that question, too. Um, I've even been asked, uh, what's the difference between cybersecurity and network security? I, I, at first, I thought they were the same thing. But then as I got into cybersecurity, uh, network security just applies to network devices. Right, whereas yeah, cybersecurity sure. applies to the whole network, even physical physical uh, devices and, and where locations and stuff. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty loaded question. Yeah, for, for sure, man. So would you recommend someone to become a network engineer? And if so, how would you recommend them go about becoming one? Yeah, I would definitely recommend someone become a network engineer. Uh, once you get those powers, <laughs> <laughs> man, you can you can go anywhere. And a lot of people think that you have to go to college and get a degree mm -hmm. in it to start or, or already be super smart, where the way you can get started, there's was called some academic certificate courses, which okay. are basically certificate courses that you could take in college that you can use financial aid for. I don't know if every college has them, but some colleges have these academic certificate courses, which are just certificate courses that you don't have to uh, pursue a degree to get. It's just for the certification. You know, you might take six courses, six classes in this course. Cause that's what my son is doing. He's going to college for uh, what's called routing and switching configuration. Okay. And the, the program consists of like six or seven courses in these courses. There's like a, uh, uh, land land concepts. 
There's a wireless course. There's a, vo a voice over IP course. There's, of course, two configuration courses where they teach you how to configure routers and switches. And it's like six classes all just focused on uh, getting the CCNA. Right. So they teach you all the aspects of the CCNA without having to go in debt to get a college loan or anything. And it's not a degree. So to me, if you can, if you can start that way, if there are colleges around that offer just a certificate course or the academic certificate course, that'd be a good way to start. I mean, you don't go in debt. If, if you don't, it might be like a $3,000 course. If you don't have 3000, you could do what's called, uh, they call it the nail net program where you can put like 25% down and make monthly payments. So okay. it's designed that you don't go in debt. I mean, there's so ways, so many ways to do it now, but I think that's the best way to get started. That, that that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, what about um, as far as like people want to connect with you? Um, okay. Or do you you got a website? You got a LinkedIn or something? I don't have a website anymore, but I do. I have a LinkedIn. You can find me at Terrence Swan on LinkedIn. Okay. I have a Facebook page. It's also called a Cisco Tutor Guy. You know, Facebook.com Cisco Tutor Guy. I have a YouTube page of the same name, Cisco Tutor Guy. And uh, yeah, if you, you can contact me or reach me through any of those means, you know, I, I, most of the time I respond to whatever comments or whatever. Um, just get at me on either of those those three. Cool. So so what's next, man? What what's your your next endeavor? You just wrote a book. Shout out to the Cisco Tutor guy. Link gonna be in the description. But what's next for you, man? What's what's what you want to accomplish? Well, um. I got a few little hobbies that I'm working on, some IPTV stuff. Uh, like like I said earlier, I I want to, I still want to get that wireless certification. I, I need that superpower too. I like referring <laughs> each skill as a superpower because when I was at my last job, we was we used to call ourselves the Network Justice League, you know. So we we like some <laughs> superheroes of the network. So yeah, I, I do want to get that wireless certification still. Um, and I'm, I am going to pursue that CCNP security, especially now that I see how much easier it is to get it with the, when they change it. So I'm going to wait until February and I'm pursue that CCNP security. And, uh, for right now, you know, I'm with a good company. I think I might look at retiring at this company. Cause you know, of all the companies I work with, this is the one that I'm even, even considered staying at right. usually two or three years later, I, I get like another offer and I'm like, okay, let me see what's out there. But I, I'm at a point where I'm, I'm not even interested in looking for any more jobs, doing any more interviews now. I'm just content. I'm happy, man. You able to secure that bag. Yeah, man. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro. Shout out no, to you. No doubt. No doubt. But you were the inspiration behind the, the, the whole YouTube channel. So uh, shout out to you as well. Thanks, man. Being uh, innovative. Yeah, I'm just doing my part, man, to get back, you know, so others can secure that bag as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And congratulations on the the, the 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 pregnancy. Ah, yeah, the new baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. four already. I got, but my kids are grown. I, I mean, I look like a kid. But <laughs> I got, my youngest is eighteen. And I, three boys and one girl. You look good, man. Black don't crack. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all day, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, look, man. I'm gonna put all your information. Your link in the description. I'm gonna, I'm gonna link your book. I'm going to link your YouTube channel, your LinkedIn, all that good stuff. And I would like to have another like round table when you come back on and we have some other um, brothers get on with us as well to talk about IT, the pitfalls, things to look out for and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. That'd be, that'd be cool. No doubt. Cool, man. Thanks. Hey, thanks for coming on, Terrence. Hey, no doubt, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, before we go, is, is there anything you want to tell people any words of encouragement or anything before we out of here? Uh, just like I was saying before, if you want to pursue this career, I think you should. It's a way out. It's to go and take it to whatever situation you're trying to get out of. Just uh, have a willingness to learn, you know, embrace the journey. Facts. Facts. Cool, man. Well, thanks, Terrence. All right, man. Peace.